If you live with diabetes, you probably know that life with diabetes is a constant balancing act as we thrive to keep our blood sugars in range. Not wanting too many high blood sugars, also known as hyperglycemia, or too many low blood sugars, aka hypoglycemia. But there is no need to constantly worry. Blood sugar fluctuations are quite normal, even for people who do not live with diabetes. But I think it's a really valid question to ask, when is it that blood sugars actually become dangerous? At what levels should we worry? So let's talk about it. And let's also talk about why high blood sugars can be dangerous, how you know whether or not you're having a high blood sugar, and of course, what you can do about it. I'm Christelle from Diabetes Strong, and I've been living with type 1 diabetes since 1997. That's a long time that I've been managing my blood sugars. I try to have a fairly objective approach to my blood sugar management. I try not to stress too much about daily fluctuations, high and lows, without letting my blood sugars run wild, of course. But I think it's really important that we know the facts about fluctuations, high and lows, and when it becomes problematic, and when it becomes outright dangerous. Before we can talk about what levels are dangerous, we have to agree on a baseline, and that is what is a blood sugar for a person who do not live with diabetes. So generally, a person who do not live with diabetes will have blood sugars in the range of 70 to 130 milligrams per deciliter, um, depending on the time of day and when was the last time that person ate a meal. Newer findings or theories show that post-meal blood sugars can go all the way up to 140 milligrams per deciliter though. But those are all for people who do not live with diabetes. Now, let's talk about us who do. For most people, high blood sugars become symptomatic once blood sugar reaches levels of 180 to 200 milligrams per deciliter. Blood sugars above 200 milligrams per deciliter needs to be treated with insulin immediately. In some cases, exercise and water can help as well. However, you have to be careful. If your blood sugar is above 250 milligrams per deciliter, you should test your urine for ketones. You want to make sure that you're not spilling ketones and that you're not developing DKA, diabetes ketoacidosis. DKA is when the blood turns acidic due to prolonged high blood sugars and ketones in the bloodstream. This can be extremely dangerous, it can be fatal, and you need to be treated immediately. DKA can occur if you're sick or if you're fighting an infection. It can be due to, for example, an insulin pump malfunction, or even if you forget to take your insulin for a few days. If your blood sugar is running higher than 250 milligrams per deciliter over several hours, and if you're also spilling ketones, medium to high ketones, and you cannot get your blood sugars down on your own, you should definitely seek medical attention ASAP. You have to reach out to either the medical team or seek emergency medical care. People living with diabetes are at a heightened risk of slipping into a diabetic coma due to high blood sugars once blood sugars go over 600 milligrams per deciliter. At this point, your blood turns thick and syrupy and excess glucose or sugar gets moved from the bloodstream and out through your urine. And this kickstarts a filtering process that draws large amount of fluid from your body. This is a true medical emergency. This can be very dangerous and it can be life-threatening. If you're in this situation, you should call 911. That was a lot of scary stuff I just threw at you. And the immediate dangers of high blood sugars are very real, should be taken very serious. All that being said though, some of us, even us who live with diabetes for a long time, have not necessarily been in the situation where we needed medical attention to help get our blood sugars down into range. So even though if you live with diabetes, you're at risk, there's nowhere written that this will definitely happen to you. But aside from the immediate danger of high blood sugars, what do we actually mean when we say chronic high blood sugars are dangerous? Having a high blood sugar means there is too much sugar in the bloodstream and not enough insulin to lower it. This can happen for a lot of different reasons including not injecting enough insulin, if you inject insulin, or maybe eating a little bit too much, not enough exercise, hormones, stress, or even lack of sleep. High blood sugar is dangerous. However, it's important to remember that high blood sugars are primarily dangerous over prolonged periods of time, unless of course we're talking about DKA. This means for the most part, occasional increases in your blood sugars 
won't impact you over the long term. But chronic prolonged high blood sugars, here imagine a lifetime of diabetes with blood sugars over 200 milligrams per deciliter, will for most people lead to diabetes-related complications. The most common long-term diabetes-related complications are macrovascular complications that can include damages to the large blood vessels in your legs, in your heart, and in your brain, as well as microvascular complications, which can include damages to the small blood vessels, which can lead to problems for your kidneys, your nerves, your eyes, and your feet. So how do you know if your blood sugar is high? Well, the fastest, probably most accurate way to determine if your blood sugar is high, maybe even too high, is to do a finger stick using glucometer. But there are also symptoms that you can pay attention to that will indicate if you have a high blood sugar. However, the symptoms might vary. You might feel some, you might not feel any. And they might also vary depending on how high your blood sugar is. I personally do not feel any symptoms when my blood sugars are moderately high. But if your blood sugar is around the 200 milligrams per deciliter, you might start to feel some of these symptoms. And I'm going to read you off the list here. So it could be increased thirst, frequent need to urinate, fatigue, achy muscles, slightly blurred vision, as well as headaches. If your blood sugar is dangerously high, if you have ketones, so now we're close to going into DKA, you might experience some of these symptoms. Nausea, vomiting, fruity smelly breath, dry mouth, weight loss, weakness, extreme fatigue, confusion, severely achy muscles, extremely blurred vision, shortness of breath. If you are experiencing any of these later stage symptoms of high blood sugars, seek medical attention immediately. Balancing blood sugars is not easy. Every day we have to strive to keep our blood sugars in range, not to go too high as we just discussed, or too low. So here are some strategies that you can implement to help you keep your blood sugars in range. This first one is, in my opinion, probably the most important one, and that is to understand the food that you're eating and how it most often impacts your blood sugars. And this is a learning process. Look up the carbohydrates in your food, and what you're drinking, if in doubt. Cook most of your meals at home, that way you'll know exactly what's in the food or the drinks that you're consuming. Another one is get enough sleep. If you use insulin to manage your blood sugars, double check that your doses are accurate or that your ratios are accurate. Talk to your doctor, make sure that you're getting the right amount, not too much, not too little insulin for your meals. You should check the expiration date on your diabetes medication. If it's expired, it might not work as effectively or at all. If you manage with insulin, you should also always keep your rapid acting insulin nearby. Another good tip is to always take your diabetes medication, insulin tablets, other injections as prescribed. And it's so important that we work with our medical team to adjust our medications or how ever else we're managing our diabetes so that it's adjusted to where we are in our life. Maybe your activity level has changed. Maybe your life situation has changed. There's a lot of things that can impact how we need to manage our blood sugars. And finally, treat all high blood sugars as well as low blood sugars early so that you catch them before they become dangerous. I know high blood sugars can be annoying, believe me, I know. But I think it's important to highlight that there are things that we can do to help limit the risk of them becoming scary or even dangerous. I hope this video was helpful and that you learned something new. So please share, what are your strategies for reducing the risk of those high, scary, even dangerous blood sugars? Please leave me a comment down below this video. Also, if you like my content, if you'd like to see more from me, please click that subscribe button and turn on notifications. That is that little bell that shows up when you click that subscribe button. Hit that, and you'll be informed whenever I post new content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.